Welcome one and welcome all. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is Wednesday, June 8th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where I like to take the opportunity and share my opinion on OTC and penny stocks. And that's all I'm doing, folks. I'm sharing my opinion. I'm not licensed. I can't give any advice on what to buy or sell. So when I show you a stock, I'm not pumping it. I'm not paid by anybody to tell you about these stocks, even when I do an interview. I don't get any free shares or anything like that I'm just doing this because I want to help that's all and the reason I bring this up is I did get some verbal abuse the other day on Twitter I was being told that I was pumping stocks and that I wasn't warning people properly about scam stocks truth of the matter is folks there's lots of scams out there there are pump and dumps and I can't be aware of all of them and the information that cybersecurity is sharing with everybody out there could be very useful. I mean, knowing a company is a scam or a pump and dump isn't all bad. As long as you know, you know not to stay in it for a long hold. I don't give a heck what's up with the company. If it starts to move and it's making gains that day, I will jump into it and take that money. But information is always good to know. All right. Now, why we're here, to look at what was moving today. Some news came out earlier this week out of China. They are easing up on this one-year lockdown they've had down on technology companies. So U.S. stocks from China have been running this week, and they were running today. Even stocks that only appear to be Chinese. Let me show you what I found today. First stock up is ticker QTT, Qtushio Inc. I think I'm saying that right. Now this stock is on the NASDAQ, not on the OTC markets, but that doesn't stop me from coming over to the otcmarkets.com website. This is really my go-to site for virtually any stock. I start here and work out from here. But when it comes to OTC stocks, this is my number one go-to site and no other. Because Fiener and the SEC update this site every single day. And I don't know of any other site that they do that. So when I do my due diligence, first time I find the information, it's current. God, you talk about saving me a lot of time and headaches. So, ticker QTT. They finished the day today at $1.63 with over 71% gains. They are a Chinese company, but they have a headquarters here in New York. So, what does the company do? Well, I jumped over to their website here, and they tell us that Kutushio Inc. operates innovative and fast-growing mobile content platforms in China with a mission to bring fun and value to its users. In fact, their name, Kutushio, means fun headlines. Now, what they are really known for is their algorithms, a lot like TikTok. They are able to learn about the users and bring them what they want to see without them having to go and search for it. So that's what they're up to. Now, I haven't so, mentioned this, but there is no news for this company today. There are no new disclosures. None at all. This has a 71% gain today simply because its boat was on the right waters. When the tide came in and went up, they went up with it. And a lot of companies did. So what was the relative volume around this company for not having a catalyst? Phew, look at that. Wow. We are at under 100,000 shares. 1,000. And today she went over 17 million. That is over 170 times her normal volume. For not having Catalyst, she got some big rise out of these tides. And the share structure. All right. We don't have the float here. It's not available. Unrestricted shares is where you're normally going to get it. But we do have the outstanding. And that's really all we need, folks. 14 million in the outstanding. Whatever the float is, it's not over 14 million. So that is a low float. Absolutely. Financials. But well, we are talking about a NASDAQ stock here. No small numbers. Remember, we got to grab these three zeros. Put that behind there. I think I made a mistake yesterday. That is $680 million that they did at the end of last year. And they had to spend $183 million and they got to keep almost a half a billion dollars as their own money. What about quarterly reports? We got anything current here? Uh, no, they don't even show a space for it here. So they may not be bringing that information over here, the quarterly reports for this company. And disclosures, I don't think they have anything new. No, well over a month. 
So as I said, we have no disclosures, we have no news. They're just in the right place at the right time and they got that surge and it really pushed them up today. However, they are a company in business doing very well in China. And I'm sure when you have all these fun apps like TikTok and you're locked up doing nothing else, I bet they're getting a lot of business right now. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see how high she got today. I'm sure she was a lot higher than that. All right, I have wrangled up QTT on my Thinkorswim charting platform. This is a free trading platform. If you like what you see, just mosey on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account. Keep your account open and you can use this just like I am. So QTT, six month, four hour chart. Got a high bubble back here of $13.10 and a low bubble about three weeks ago of 62 cents. And right now, we're at $1.63. She has predominantly been under that 200 the entire time. She did have a good strong punch across it here. Periscope up here and then today, boy today she just busted through it hard. And we can see there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday she had her little push on Monday when it all got started. Kept it up a little bit on Tuesday, but wow, folks, look at that jump. And the technicals, they are on fire right now, folks. All of it is on fire. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So nothing much was going on until Monday. And coincidentally, that 200 was coming down and got right close enough so that it could bounce right up on top of that 200. Yesterday, it did a little bit of gains, but today, without any new articles out there, without any press releases of its own or filings, it took off. And look, folks, look at the volume. There's none yesterday or on Monday when it all started. Where's the volume? <laughs> but today, it's there. Talk about a delayed effect. The technicals were real strong, but as you can see, after market here, we had a huge drop, and that actually looks like it's more in the day than after market. Let's take a closer look. Yeah. So she did have a nice run today. There's your Monday. She did have some small gains. Tuesday, a little bit more, but wow. Today she ate her Wheaties and was ready to run and jump. Look at this, folks. She hit a high here of $2.34 starting this morning at just under a dollar. So that was over 100% gains if you got out before she fell. She's ended down here at $1.63. Now, out of curiosity, I'm going to draw my line at the bottom of the surge and the top of the surge and put my attitude line right here in the middle. I've tried to find the center. And what I'm looking for is to see if it kept 50% of what it put on the table. If it is on either side of that line and touching it, I'm a happy camper. I'm a happy camper because it's kept 50% or more, which to me is like a 7 out of 10 chance it's going to hold and maybe probably grow. But if it comes below this, well, that same 7 out of 10 chance goes the opposite direction, that it's going to fall. And right now, she's real close. I'll give you that. She is coming right up to it because if this hung out there in the air, like down here, I would expect it to fall all the way down to the next strongest SMA. But that doesn't just mean on this chart. We can go back, say that 20-day, one-hour chart. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah, see? It really isn't hanging in the air. It is sitting on the 10 right here. And all of these SMAs are in play at the same time. We may only be looking at one time span, but they're all happening. So she is actually sitting on something. And that 50% mark, it could be a little higher, a little low, but it's right there. It's right in the midst of it. So she's at a juncture right now. The SMAs are all pointing up. I think this has a good chance of continuing to rise with the tide. Remember, she has no cash of her own. No news, no filings, not even any tweets. They're making good money and I would presume their product is hot. Come on now, an app that goes out searching for things for you so you don't have to and you're locked up, locked down because of COVID in China. What else are you doing? <laughs> so this place is probably making big bucks right now. So I keep my eye on QTT. It's uh, still relatively cheap. It is seemingly picking up momentum. And today is when the volume came in. At the back half of the day, the volume came in and it could continue. Doesn't look like it at this very moment, but put it on your watch list. She may surprise you. All right, let's take a look at another Chinese stock. 
Well, all right, this next stock we're taking a look at told me a story. Told me a lot of facts I wasn't aware of, and I don't think most other people are either. This is ticker ARVY, RV. Their name, Alliance Recovery Corps. Now, this is a Chinese company. I know that doesn't sound very Chinese. That's kind of what I look for is a Chinese name. But their address is Minyang City, China. So there you go. She finished today at 0 0.0239, just under two and a half cents with a whopping 87% gains with no news and no disclosures today. Just in the right place at the right time. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. Now, these are important green ticks here, folks. If you do your due diligence on the otcmarkets.com website, look for these. This is very good information that has been validated behind the scenes. Not quite sure what it all entails, but it is important. So when we see it, we know the company's in good shape. They look good. Now they are a shell company. That means they're not doing any business. They have no revenues to report because they're doing absolutely nothing, which is where the story began for me. I got a little confused because I see a description here of what they say they do. They tell us that they convert industrial and other waste materials into fuel oil and gases. Well, that sounds like you've got a business then. So I started jumping around and that's when I discovered a few things I don't think most people know about this company. First and foremost, it's not Chinese. No, it's not Chinese. And I'll show you how I came to that conclusion in a bit. But without having any news, any filings, or even being Chinese, what sort of volume was around the company today? Well, not bad. I mean, it's not super duper, but look here, folks. We were at 28,000 shares daily, and today she did 1.5 million. I think that's roughly 50 times. I'm not a human calculator, but I think that's close. What is her share structure on this company? Look at that. We got a low float here too. 11, let's call it 12 million shares. Oh my, look how many they got outstanding. 1.2 billion. So insiders are holding a ton of these shares, but that's not our concern right now. We have a very low float here of 12 million in a company that is rising, but is not Chinese but I know what they are. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. When you jump over here to disclosures, you can see they're all caught up on their filings and there's nothing really new here, but this is the only place I can really get information. These 10 Q's cover everything about the company. So I jumped into one. Now I came here to see what sort of revenues they had no revenues but i normally just scan down through it just to see if anything pops out at me and look what popped out the name karen courier as the consultant now that's a big deal to me why let me tell you karen courier is if you don't know karen courier is an investor in companies in stocks actually she finds these companies that are in the expert market they have been abandoned there's no management, nobody. These companies got yanked off the market because they weren't keeping up with their filings. Well, with no management there to do it, that was bound to happen. And if there's no management to fix it, they're gonna stay there and die. So she comes along and she saves these companies like a bunch of stray dogs. She goes to the courts, she petitions for custody. She wins custody and then has to put out all her money to clean that company up. Whatever is wrong with it, all of the filings, anything and everything she has to take care of. Once it's all done and becomes pink, it goes on the market as a clean shell, like this company is right now. And then she looks looks for a deal, a reverse merger, which we're all looking for. And one of her most biggest ones right now is ILUS, I-L-U-S. They work in fire suppression. She got that company off the expert market, got it some company in there, and boom, they have been exploding. And just so you can see a layout here, I found this over at Twitter, uh, RV. They say there's a 9 million float. I think we saw about 12 million. Either way, it's a great float. No dilution, no notes or debts, clean shell. Cur Karen Courier is the consultant. New directors recently, that's right, they did change all their directors and you need directors if you're ever gonna uplist. So that shows the lady has ambitions. Uh, this guy thinks the stock was at its bottom. Well, maybe not after today. And a change of control. They did have a change of control back in December 
of last year, right there, change of control, which means somebody else is getting control of the company. And that's what you normally look for is a change of control for a reverse merger to be occurring. So again, we don't have any catalysts that are actually belonging to this company today, right now, but it looked like a Chinese company, right? Everybody thought it was a Chinese company, so it caught a lot of attention and some good gains. Let's go take a look at that chart. Very interesting chart for RV. That's a six month, four hour chart. And what you notice is there are not a lot of bars because there's not a lot of volume, right? She's been doing like 28,000 shares a day. But what we do notice about those bars is they're big. She's got a float of about nine to 11 million. And that's what you get with the small float are big price movements. So this is a four hour chart. Each one of these bars represents a movement in four hours. These bars over here, they are between 40 and 60%. These bigger bars over here are between 80 and 100%. So when it moves, it moves fast. You get some strong gains out of this. And here recently, she has taken off. The 200 has just now come into the picture. If we back that up just a wee bit, you can see it has just come into the picture. And once it was here, she fell. Fell. As soon as she saw it, she ran away from it, cleared down to the bottom. And in the last two days, has taken off with a lot of volume today. And the technicals look very strong. Still hot. At 20 day, one hour view. Now it's gonna be scarce because we don't have a lot of volume. We can see yesterday she started to climb and today she has continued that climb with one big drop here, but all the technicals are still pointing up. It looks like it wants to continue growing and the volume shows that it too is growing. All right, focusing in now on that five day, five minute, getting sparser and sparser. These are five minute blocks. So yesterday you had not even an hour's worth of trading. And today, probably just an hour's worth of trading. Only 1.5 million shares sold today. Technicals look real strong. She's been climbing from 0066 up to 034. So you're looking at about uh, four to 500% gains in two days, just at this very slow rate. Now, what I anticipate honestly is that people are gonna figure out it's not Chinese and they're gonna get out. However, I don't think many are holding on to it as a long hold. I think most of them are day traders, swing traders, they're in and out pretty quick. But those that are in, once this video gets out and people realize it's not Chinese, they may really sell this off. But that would be a great buy-in price because I know Karen Courier is gonna find a deal for this clean shell. She didn't invest her money just to watch it sit there empty. She's gonna rent it out. She's gonna make a deal and that's when you're gonna to wanna to get into this. So keep your eye on ARVY, not for a continuation of a Chinese run, though it may surprise you. Look for a reverse merger. Look for a PR coming out at this sometime. I don't know when. All right, let's look at another Chinese stock. That's what they think. And finally, the last stock is CDSG, China Dongsheng International. Finished today just under a nickel, 0 0.047 with a bang and 51% gains. She's on the pink tier and current. Got those precious green ticks we're always looking for. And she is a self-proclaimed shell company just like the last one. Not doing any business, not making any money. So they say, right? Well, again, we got a description down here of what business they are doing. So as I normally do, I go jump into a quarterly report or an annual report and I get some information. Well, lo and behold, here we go again. The company is not Chinese. Yeah, even with that name. Nope, not Chinese. And I wasn't worried about the address because I've seen a lot of Chinese companies that do have headquarters here in America. That is not the case here. It is not a Chinese company and they didn't have any news today. There weren't any disclosures, but there is information in that filing I'm gonna share with you. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not bad. We went from 186,000 shares to 1.1 million. Not as much as the other companies, but you can definitely see the attention level is rising. Share structure on this one. 
Well, there you go. That's the third stock I've shown you folks with a low float. First one at about 14 million, second one roughly 11 million, this one with about 18 million. You gotta love a low float stock. Financials, right, we're not gonna see anything. Zeros across the board. I like to look at the quarterlies just to be sure because they may have just started making money. You never know. And the disclosures, which is really where I got all of my information. Right down here, I jumped into the most recent quarterly report. Now, I jumped over here primarily to see if they were making any money and then to see what they were doing. Well, I got a little more information than I was looking for. Boy, did I ever. First off, they did make two deals. Now, these deals are listed in the news. They are there when they occurred. Uh, on March 10th, 2022, CDSG entered into a development agreement with Stallion Energy Group of Houston, Texas for a working interest to develop oil production in Frio County, Southwest Texas. The Drill Ready leasehold is located within an area of the two most productive oil fields in San Antonio Oil, Gas, and District, with over 100 million barrels and 400 billion cubic feet of gas produced. An initial investment of 50,000 was made on March 18th, 2022. Then their second deal was on March 17th of this year, CDSG entered into an agreement with American Lithium Minerals, a Nevada-based publicly held corporation, whereby CDSG will have the right to earn up to 60% interest in the West End Lithium Project near Tonopah, Nevada. So they do have deals. They're not a shell company. It just isn't happening yet. Whatever it is that they're putting together, it isn't all done yet. They have made news presses about these deals, but there's no income coming in yet. So we still need to see more be developed. Something else I found while I was over here, and I wasn't expecting it, and I swear to God this is just a coincidence. I swear. Look here, folks. Yes. I know. I swear to you, this is just a coincidence. This is another Karen Courier play. This company, she is not just the consultant. She is also the CFO. Folks, I know that she has 14 companies she saved. I did a video on them, but I didn't see this one. I didn't see Avery, and I don't know how many more she has. And I can assure you this. Karen Courier is not going to court, paying all of those court fees, and then taking on the responsibility of these companies, having to invest her own money to clean them up if she wants to get anything out of them, just to sit there idle? Uh, no. No way. So I am very confident that she is going to be bringing all this together in due time. But that's got nothing to do with why it ran today. Everybody thinks it's a Chinese stock. With a name like China Dongsheng, what else could they think? Well, if they did a little more DD, they'd know. Let's go see what that chart looks like. And you knew we were going to be looking at a six-month, four-hour view of CDSG. We got a high back here of 70 cents when the bars were real big. And then we got a low down here of just over two and a half cents where the bars are just specs on our chart. She has been under the 50, which has been the only SMA that she could play to on the board because the 200 just came into the picture. And boy, is she a long ways away from that. Price is just now banging its head onto the 50. If it can get on top, that will help. Tech's are real strong. She has a very good likelihood of doing this. MACD is approaching the signal line in the right pattern. And if it can hit this signal line, we could get a nitro boost here and get a launch. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. Again, we got a big distance between the 50 and the 200. She's been under that 50. And when the news came out Monday is when she decided to try to break the 50. Tuesday, she fell beneath it again. And then today, she broke it. And she is working up hard. And the technicals look even better here. Our MACD is above the signal line, pushing up like a nice tsunami. Our RSI is at 65. And we're still above the third line on the CCI, looking really nice. Five day, five minute. So we had very little gains on Monday. It went from three cents to three and a half cents. 
Not much, right? And then we lost it all on Tuesday. And then today, today it took off. It went from about 3.2 cents up to 4.8 cents. Probably about 65, 70% gains there and fell back just a wee bit. And we were left with 51% gains. Held all of those gains. She's not Chinese, so I don't know if these gains are going to stick around. But they may want to keep hold of this company. We just saw two deals that they've made. One of them is ready to make money. I don't know about the other one, but they're sitting there on the table just waiting to launch. They haven't got anything going right now, no revenues. So CDSG is in a holding pattern with promise. We just don't have any dates yet. Do I think it's going to continue running for China? Well, maybe the technicals aren't bad. We do have a negative crossover here, but everything else looks good. This could easily turn up if nobody pays attention. That name, China Dongsheng, is going to keep pulling people in, I think. I don't think they'll get any further than the name of the company. So I'd keep my eye on this just for that for the next couple of days. But for the long run, look for that press release to come out about them going into revenues. So most of what we were looking at there are sympathy plays. I know they weren't great companies, stocks you know, memes, anything like that. But we just learned an awfully lot. First off, we see that there is a big surge going on for Chinese stocks, little or big, OTC or NASDAQ. They don't even really have to be Chinese. They just need to look like a duck and quack like a duck and they think it's a duck. But there's lots of Chinese companies out there and there could be more surge coming. Soon as the next piece of news comes out from China, we may find more Chinese companies running. So consider Chinese companies on your watch list. You see any volume start kicking in, you may want to jump into them. Most of them seem to have low floats. But we also saw two companies that aren't Chinese, both clean shells by Karen Courier, who I have a lot of faith in. One of them already has deals on the table just waiting to launch them. And the other one, we're just waiting for something. But I have faith in Karen Courier. I trust those are going to be good plays. So put them on your watch list. Nobody's telling you to get into them today. I don't tell anybody to get in. <laughs> Do your DD is what I tell you. I am a lead. I bring you information just to tickle your fancy. And if you like what you see, you're going to go out and do more due diligence, folks. Because remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.